Hey, friends. Last week, we talked about what is the gospel uh, under the, the heading of defining the evangel. So this week, we want to talk about how do we share the gospel? How do we share our personal faith? So first, I want to encourage you, be in prayer for opportunities to do such. God wants you to share your faith. Ultimately, because you're sharing your faith is a gospel opportunity, um, not just simply for somebody else to, uh, to hear and respond to the gospel, but for God to get praise. So we want to share the gospel. Um, your simple uh, act of sharing the gospel is a, a truly an act of worship, uh, and it honors God that you're telling other people about your faith and what God has done for you. So be in prayer for those opportunities. God wants to provide them, uh, and then look for them as they come up. I want to encourage you, as you're sharing your faith, know what you believe. First off, you've got to know the gospel, and that's what we talked about last week. But you need to recognize that you most likely know far more than the vast majority of people outside of the church. If you've grown up in church, if you've been in church long at all, if you've studied, read your Bible, you are far more of a theologian than most people are. And be confident in that. You don't have to know all the answers. I don't. Uh, the other pastors don't. Bottom line, uh, know what you believe, uh, know the gospel, and then keep it simple. We don't have to, um, you don't have to talk about complicated doctrines. Uh, you don't have to talk about um, um, explaining the Trinity, for example. Uh, those things are just beyond the, the sharing your faith kind of a conversation. So as you think about um, keeping it simple, remember the basics. Talk about how God created us uh, to be in fellowship with him. Talk about how Adam and Eve, as our federal representatives, um, sinned, uh, doing things that you and I would have done had we been given the chance. Um, but they sinned. They rebelled. And as a result, we are separated from God. But also talk about how God has, uh, from the beginning of time, before time, um, God has had a rescue plan. And that is that he would step into his own creation, that he would uh, live that sin-free uh, life, that he would die uh, for our sins. Um, and that he would um, ultimately be resurrected from the grave so that he paid, uh, not, not only did he defeat sin, but he paid for our sin and uh, assured our resurrection. But not only that, he also wants to restore all things to his original design such that he will bring us into uh, to harmony with him um, and restore, him, restore us and his creation um, to um, uh, be in relationship with him. So keep it simple. I also want to encourage you to know why you believe what you do. Point to the Bible. It's great if you grew up in a Christian family and you can point to uh, grandparents and parents and other family members that believe certain things and they've taught you those things. Those are great things to have. Be thankful. Give thanks for uh, the heritage that you grew up in. But keep in mind that your heritage itself did not save you and it won't convince, convince anyone else to be saved either. So uh, point to the Bible. Um, it's not sim don't simply point to what you've been told, but know what you believe, know why you believe it, and ultimately point to the, the Bible for, for, that, um, for tearing, telling that story and sharing your faith. But also talk about what changes the gospel has made in your life. Have an understanding of, um, of, of basic um, uh, purpose for you so that when you're sharing your sharing your faith with other people, you realize that you now have a, a better understanding of why you're here, why why you have been placed in this time and in, in, in this location. Um, God has put you here on purpose. Um, he's put you here for worship. He's put you here to glorify him and to enjoy his presence forever. So ultimately, as you think through um, what changes uh, he's made in your life, uh, recognize that you have an understanding of your life's purpose. But more than that, you also have an understanding of your eternal destiny. You know that, uh, just from uh, casual observation, that every single one of us is going to die, given time, until God returns and brings us home. Uh, those who are on earth will die. And ultimately, we have to recognize that there is an eternal destiny for each and every one of us. So you can share, as you're sharing your faith, that you have confidence in your eternal destiny in heaven with God in the presence of Jesus Christ himself. But even more than that, even while you have hope for the future, you also have peace and you have love and you have joy today. God certainly is going to restore all things and he will bring you back into his presence because of your faith through his grace, or by his grace, I should say. But ultimately, you've got to recognize that he is also with you, fills you with his Holy Spirit today so that you have that peace and that love and that joy for today, giving you strength to even share the gospel and to praise him at any given point. So also, as we think about sharing our faith, recognize that any 
given storyteller, no matter what story you're telling. And in this case, you're a storyteller telling the story of your faith, your relationship with Jesus Christ. But every single storyteller has to understand who his audience is and what the message is that they're trying to, to provide. So uh, think through, who are you sharing the gospel with? And understand the context that they're coming from, understand the context that they're listening from. Um, we see the uh, folks in the Bible did the exact same thing. For example, Stephen, uh, and then in Acts chapter 7, Stephen was being uh, persecuted and would ultimately be stoned by religious leaders, Jews, who knew the Bible, knew the Old Testament scriptures, um, and were uh, committed to them. And Stephen pointed out to these religious experts how Jesus Christ and faith in him was what had been um, spoken about throughout the entire scriptures. So Stephen knew his audience. He addressed his audience by pointing to the Bible, even as he told his story of faith. We see other examples, such as Paul in Acts chapter 17. We see Paul in, um, uh, in Athens as he's sharing um, with uh, Greek, uh, Gentile Greek philosophers. He knew exactly who he was speaking to. He spoke in a philosophical manner, and ultimately he, uh, he attempted to connect with them in a manner in which uh, they were thinking. Um, he didn't necessarily go to the Old Testament scriptures for them because that's not where their paradigm was. Likewise, um, and later in the, in the same book of Acts, in Acts chapter 6, Paul was now sharing with King Agrippa and Bernice, and he talked about, um, he made reference to the Jewish faith because they understood it to a degree. Uh, he talked about the circumstances and how um, folks had opposed him for the, his beliefs, but ultimately he spoke to the audience knowing what their thinking was, knowing their concerns, and he spoke from their paradigm as he shared his personal faith and as he shared um, his beliefs. So um, know, your God, know your audience, speak to them from that, from that perspective so that they can understand where you're coming from as well. But as you're sharing with your audience and knowing who they are and what they're thinking, you also need to be prepared to deal with objections. Now, next week, we're going to get into Christian apologetics, and I'm not going to get into the apologetic side of things, but recognize that as you're sharing your faith, you may have to deal with objections. As you're dealing with objections, recognize that rarely is the first objection, the first response to the gospel, um, the real issue. Part of knowing your audience is recognizing that uh, oftentimes folks will um, make excuses for not wanting to accept the gospel, not wanting to respond to it. So recognize um, that, that many folks will respond in a manner in which it's not necessarily favorable. Uh, they might not seem as though they're being favorable. They may simply be making excuses whether they realize it or not. So uh, ask them how they came to the conclusion of the objection that they came to, address that briefly, but ultimately get right back to the gospel. Don't let their initial excuses lead you down a, a rabbit trail that you're not prepared to go to and it's really not fruitful for sharing the gospel itself. Address the issue that they bring up, but then get right back to the gospel. You can even use words like, can I tell you how I feel about that? And then point to the gospel, getting back um, to the track of, of uh, the God's creation, um, the, the fall of man, the rescue plan, and the restoration of uh, that God uh, has planned for us all along. Next week, as I mentioned before, we'll deal with Christian apologetics and uh, we'll get more in depth about how to respond to, to objections. But um, ultimately, what I want you to see is that you need to be in prayer for opportunities for the gospel. You need to know why you believe what you believe. You need to recognize how the gospel has made changes in your life. And you need to understand the context of the audience that you're speaking to. Deal with objections. Don't get into an argument. You don't need, uh, um, as one pro um, seminary professor said, you don't need spiritual BO. You don't need to stink about sharing the gospel. Meet folks where they're at. Share the gospel in love. Be truthful. Be loving. Always be honoring and glorifying God. I'll be praying for you.